this one is yeah game six of eight but game 66 against the Atlanta Hawks going up Playing against, against our, against Hawkers, our He's flown under the radar way too much the past few years, as far as I'm concerned. Dude is one of the best big men in the league, hands down. And as much as it's an honor to face him, once we're on the court, all that goes out the window. I'm going to do my best to show Big Al what Freak's all about. Showtime. Welcome everyone, let's get ready for some NBA basketball on 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harlan with Greg Anthony and Clark Kellogg alongside. And our sideline reporter tonight is Doris Burke. Last game for the Hawks, they picked up the W against the Raptors. All right, let's go. Splitters checked in for Horford. Scott comes in for Paul Milson. Tim Hardaway Jr. is checked in for Cephalosha. And Dennis Schroeder subbed in for Kyle Corbett. So on the four for Memphis. Freak, he's in at power forward. Allen is out there with Udrick. Then it's Brandon Wright, and it's Barnes in at the three spot. Here's Hardaway, down to five on the shot clock. And good on the basket. Book it. Splitters got his first points of the night. And the Grizzlies leading by three. Tim Hardaway Jr., the son of the great Tim Hardaway Sr., had a very good rookie season. However, last season, Clark, not the improvement that some were hoping to see on him. Kevin, you knew the expectations were going to be high going forward, very high. Uh, but sometimes you step back before you move forward. He only shot 39% last season, very low for a guy of his caliber. He feeds it to Splitter. Can't get it to go. Now the Grizzlies take it the other way. They defeated the Pelicans in their last game. And across the board in that game, guys, they shot the lights out. Rarely do you see a team shoot like that from everybody. I mean, they were getting scoring from every position all over the court. And he hits it and gets hacked down the play. A three-point possibility if he can convert the free throw. Uh, how about the perseverance there, the extra effort yeah, on that offensive good play? Memphis. Yeah, a lot of whistles here early, as well as foul trouble starting to be an issue. Yeah, that's a big reason they're trailing. You can't allow a parade to the free throw line and expect to be on top in the game. What great touch there on the fadeaway. Man, right in his face. Memphis leading by six. And let's get this update now from Doris Burkers across the way on the sideline. Mike Budenholzer and I got a chance to talk for a bit. They've had success against this team, winning their one matchup of the season, but he's not getting complacent, and his first order of business has been readying them to score against such a tough shot-blocking presence inside. He said in a game like this, you can't turn down good perimeter looks. We've got to be aggressive getting to our looks and try to track down our misses. Guys, let's see how it works. And Doris, as always, thanks. And guys, do you agree with Coach's game plan here, giving out tough the D is that they're going to go up against? Uh, I really do. I think they're such a hard team to generate offense against that that has to be where they devote most of their attention. Well, as long as it doesn't come at the expense of their own defense, fellas, I mean, they can't concentrate so intensely on offense they forget to defend. Well, you just watch Jeff Teague. He's a natural scorer. Clark, he's also made steady improvement as a playmaker. Yeah, you look at his assist rate, Kevin. Well in the top ten in the league. He's cut down on his turnovers as well. You can tell he's starting to really figure it out, and the game is slowing down for him. Four on the shot clock. Let's it go. And it comes off the front of the rim. The Hawks trail by six. Here's Splitter, and a beautiful feed leads to a monster jam. 
Well, that fast break went according to plan. Yeah, nice job there, Greg. Recognizing the opportunity was there to push it, and then excellent execution. And he's also an athletic. You know, sometimes you forget that. I mean, this guy's got the tools also to be a terrific defender. And I still think he's developing consistency at that end of the floor. And a chance to catch up on some numbers here. The scoring breakdown for the Grizzlies. And they've made an effort to get to the line here in the first half, guys. And it's starting to pay off. They've gotten their fair share of points off turnovers so far tonight, too. They double him with three. Shooter passes to Scott. Jumper off the screen. Shot is good off the back rim and in. Now just a two-point Grizzly lead. And speaking of Jeff Teague's defense, I mean, his rebounding, I think, could also be a, a little higher. I mean, with his bounce, he can get in there and grab a few more. Allen dishes to Freak. Can't get it to go. Nice D from Scott. That's terrific defense right there to prevent from converting in close. Schroeder kicks to the T. There's the three. And the rebound goes to the Grizzlies. Last time they met was in Memphis. Yeah, but they didn't roll over in that game. Had a good chance still to pull out the victory. Just couldn't come through in crunch time. Greg, I thought it was a solid effort from them all the way around. I mean, but as you and I know, moral victories are kind of empty consolation prize. The loss is a loss. That ties it up. Teague's got eight. Here it is again. On a lot of their possessions this first half, they've established great position inside. Yeah, just getting the ball into the post has to be option number one for them right now. It's stolen by T. It's three on three on the fast break. Here's Hardaway. Banked in off the glass. Hardaway has got a second bucket tonight. Bad. Boy, they are passing the ball very crisply right now. They really are, and their last three buckets have come by way of an assist. 29 seconds left in the first quarter. Here's Udrich. Can they get it? And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. And here in the early going, missed free throws starting to become the story. Yeah, and as a coaching staff, you feel helpless here. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. You just hope they snap out of the out of the rut. And the Hawks making a change here. Muscala's checked in. And the Grizzlies also with the sub. Carter's checked in. Atlanta's gone 0 of 2 from deep here. Teague with the ball. He had a 21 point outing in their last game against the Raptors in Toronto. And also defensively, he was really aggressive. I mean, matter of fact, he had four steals over the course of that game. From deep three point range, and no good trying to get that one. Tie game in Atlanta. And the second quarter will get underway just after this short break. And a chance now to hear from Paul Millsap talking about the confidence of his team. You know, our attitude approaching the game has been, you know, we can beat any team in this league. You know, if we work together, you know, um, yeah. play. Greg, it's got to be more than just attitude, right? I mean, Let's go. And the Hawks with a completely new group Damn. on the floor. And We're the Grizzlies with some changes. We've got Splitter. Scott is out there with Paul Milson. Then there's Hardaway. And it's Teague in at the point guard position. So that's the lineup for Atlanta. That's good. A lot of space right there to get that shot off. Not a very good job of the defender getting over the top of that screen in that particular play. To the middle, Scott. There's a killer two-handed slam. Taking it to the rack with power right there. No. Hammering down with the two-handed slam. Just piling on the lead with the dunk like that. Here's Freak. How's that for an answer? Right back with the dunk. Tell you what, Kevin, they'd love to see him get a lot more of those opportunities. Mark, that deficit will go away quickly if he dies. And how about how he capped that one out? Almost like the one-two punch. Scott can't get it to go. You can see how much the defense respects him. I mean, they were all over him on that look. Dishes it to Freak. Right with a screen on Scott. Here's Allen. An easy layup after coming off the pick. 
And now just a four-point Hawks lead. Boy, they keep hammering away at him inside, forcing that ball into the paint. Smash mouth basketball. And Clark, it's a strategy that has served them well during the course of this first half. And here's Millsap from the arc. The Grizzlies pull it in. Freak's got three rebounds now in this one. Great offensive performance they're putting on. You see the benefit of knocking down baskets consecutively because it leads to the confidence growing and growing. And guys, we call that the zone because that's where they are right now. They are in a zone, and I'm sure they feel unstoppable. Pocket four. Memphis needs to get off a shot here. That's good. And it's Udrick with the assist that time. And that's now six points for Freak. That has gotten Let's half go shots from three-point range to go down in the second quarter. Three of six from downtown. Do a lot to fight around that screen on that possession. Right to pass the freak. It's Allen on the wing. Guarded by Hardaway. Baseline J on the way. Here's Wright. Tries again. And that one's good. Wright's got his first Let's bucket go, of the night. Just a grinder. Always doing the dirty work on the offensive class. And that's one of the things he brings to the table. Outside Millsap. Scott dishes to Hardaway. He kicks to Millsap. The Hawks working the ball around. T for three. Can't get it to go. And Memphis the other way now. And guys, you hear about how the Hawks are the jokingly referred to as the Spurs of the East. It has to do with their coach, Mike Budenholzer, who, who's really brought that philosophy here to Atlanta. And what do you guys think so far about the offensive approach for the Hawks? Well, they've come out of that locker room with the hot hand. Those jumpers have been falling. And the first half comes to a close. Right, half time at 62 a piece. A Let's Arena go. Listen up, everybody. The second half doesn't have to be as close as the first if we pay attention to a couple of things. We got a spectacular boost from the guys coming off the bench, and that's huge because it should leave us with nothing but fresh legs as we get deep into this game. Something we're going to need if we're going to win this game are second chance points. And so far, that's the one thing that we've been getting. Keep hitting the offensive boards hard. Okay, one more thing. A smooth flow to the second half is just what we're looking for. Let's keep things moving, but not at some kind of breakneck pace. This is a very tough opponent, and we've got a difficult half in front of us. But I've got all the faith in the world in you guys. I know you can get this done. All right, let's go men first. And now, your Atlanta Welcome back, everybody. The start of the second half getting underway. Both teams battling hard through the first half. So it's Memphis picking up the win. This was a very strong showing for him, Greg. Not necessarily a runaway win, but one they'll feel very good about. And, and let's face it, any time you can go on the road and win in the fashion the coach they did, didn't put me on you after have that to second feel half. good about it. Yeah, really an outstanding effort there. all the way around. And a the chance now to send over Doris Burke standing by on the sideline. Doris. Well, Mark, this team seems to have a rhythm going and building on some great momentum. What's been the key to the success this group is having? We're working. You know, we, we, uh, we uh, are sacrificing for each other. I think we are, we're doing a better job on that. And, you know, uh, we don't get a nice practice, but we're getting, uh, we're getting working. Well, congratulations, Mark. Keep it going. Guys, over to you. Doris, thank you as always. Well, folks, that's going to do it for now. Wow. For Greg Anthony, Clark Kellogg, and Doris Burke, 
This is Kevin Harlan. Knows how to um, the NBA do a little presented press conference by 2K at the end of the game. And now to our good friend Ernie Johnson, who is standing by in the studio. The 2K Sports Post Game Show. Hey, y'all. Ernie Johnson here along with Kenny Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. Welcome back for the presentation of our Jordan player of the game, Jeff Green. And how'd you feel about his performance, Shaq? You know what, Ernie? I must admit it. I didn't see this kind of performance coming from him tonight. He's been coming off a stretch of game where he just looked lost out there. To see him turn around this quickly, it's a nice surprise. Play after play, he was getting after it, making plays, and making it look easy. What a performance by Jeff Green. This is a man with a world of talent. A lot of times on the offensive end, he gets neglected. But when they pay attention and make him a focal point, he's tough to handle. And that'll do it for our broadcast tonight. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, for me and, and Kenny Smith, and Shaquille O'Neal, and Kevin Harlan, and the entire 2K Sports crew, have a wonderful Yep, you two might catch you. Basquiat, let's go. Got that art for y'all, that real spit. Uh, they call me Basquiat. The Harlem's in my pockets full of fat and that's making all the ladies drop. Paint me street corners green. I'm bang up the color bill scene. Half man, half amazing. Call you see me at the Dimmy Gog. Halo crown with the dollar sign, got a poet. A ghetto saint to a grand design. Call me focus before the Basquiat. The streets is hopeless. I'm that Harlem's ain't painting pictures. Making new kind of skill, I'm banking up to all figures. They call me Basquiat. Pockets full of fat, not dust to thorn. Your boy makes the street pop. Got it all locked, but it don't stop. Make it high, love it when the bunnies bounce when they on top. Basquiat, a yacht from the seven seas. Making way to the world, don't you see me? Basquiat, my pocket go deep. I dive in the highs, get up and then creep. I'm all hustling, grind, I'm all about money. No time for playing games, and this game ain't funny, ain't funny. Yo, he's nice. What's his name? <laughs> hey, he goes by the name Basquiat, yo. Basquiat puts game down on them bars, yo. I'm telling you. Hey, we record a nice mixtape. Hey, do a nice video. Get some honeys up in there dancing. Hey, we could build a franchise around this, yo. Hey, I want us to do a deal, freak. What you mean by us, V? I mean us, as in you and me, me and you. Putting some serious Skrilla behind this and... Put me on, man. I'm Basquiat. What? You heard me? <laughs> I'm Basquiat. That's me. That's you? Yeah. One hundred. Okay, you nice with it. What? <laughs> yeah. Wow, okay. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Basquiat. Yo, we don't need no major label to make this happen, man. And in the end, we reap all the benefits. Think about it. What you thinking? Mm. I know as we passed Colonel Young Park too. Yo, Coach Judy was the best. I remember when she took us from park to park so we could play ball. And she taught us how to be comfortable in places other than the courts and the projects. Word, word. <laughs> Yo, Coach Judy would have us shoot hundreds of jumpers all over the court with both hands. And <laughs> hey, you caught onto the ambidextrous thing real <laughs> fast, though. All right. Now, but you were a beast with the hops. You were like 13 five six and could reverse dunk with two hands right. come on man what <laughs> yeah I used to bug all the older dudes out on the court yep you know <laughs> oh good times man good times
It's nothing, man. It's it's silly, really. Come on, Vic, fess up. I'm just I'm thinking about how fortunate you are. You know how how blessed you are. You know, you, you grew up with a mom's and a dad. Both parents. Your family treated me like family when my dad died in Greenhaven in his ninth year on his 40-year bid. You remember that? Yeah. Then I turn around, and my mom's died from that flu. But that sick parting gift my dad left my mom's? Well, I feel you, Vic. But it's all right, man. You know, your mom's and pops are good people. It's, you know, so may they rest in power. So you're gonna patronize me now? Yeah. You gonna pity the little boy who's worthless, low-budget parents died from AIDS? Is that what you're gonna do? You don't, don't pity me, all right? And don't play me, neither. As a matter of fact, go play the lottery, because, hey, you never know. Your chances might Yo, be better. Vic, 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 Vic. What are you doing right now? You got everything, don't you, freak? What do I have? Nothing. Man, I got nothing. You... You won't even, you won't even, your cheap butt won't even front me. The Skrilla I need to back me. A Basquiat mixtape, yo. Wow. And on top of that, I get banned from traveling with the team. I get banned from the locker rooms. I get banned from the arena. So what? Would you let them do this to your best friend, man? So what kind of friend are you? Vic, you being serious right now. You're serious. Yeah, you sound like you on some Welch's sour grape right now, man. You jelly? I ain't jealous of you, freak. You sure, man? Because this is... Well, I don't know what you call this little tirade. It spreads like some Welch's grape jelly. Are you jealous? Like I said, I ain't jealous of you, freak. As a matter of fact, I think you are jealous of me. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah, that's right. I think you jealous of the way that I'm laying it down with these hottie hotties on Instagram <laughs> while you stuck at home with your one blazing beauty. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, don't get heated because you went behind my back to get at Yvette. And she turned you down, B. Hmm? Oh, well, what's wrong, Basquiat? Yeah, that's right. Look at you. Out there drowning in the middle of a whack lake without a lifesaver. Brother, real talk. Mm -hmm. You know how I get. All right, I was... I was feeling a little friendly. I yeah. got a little loose with it, you know? Oh, hey, hey, I was yo, 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 You yo. know me, man. Save that riff for Heathcliff. Yvette told me all about it. I kept it on the low, low. See if you ever was gonna mention it. You did it. You broke the code, B. One never steps to his boy's boo, even after they break up. But you broke the code. And you know you did. But you know what? It's still all love here. But it's you who chooses this life in these streets. You know, you want to get on, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Tinder, trying to chase these thirsty tens. Yeah, use my name as a coupon. Reel them all in. Hey, sweet thing. Hey, sweetie pie. Hey, shawty, you know I'm a FOF, a friend of freak. And then when they husbands and boyfriends start coming after you, and you want to play the macho man. Yeah. Huh? Who's the one that has to pay these lawyers in six-figure settlements, huh? Me! Not you. Oh, no, not you, Vic. And then, and then when you want to throw these lavish parties without consulting me, who's the one stuck with the bill, Vic? Huh? Me! Not you! But me, I have hit you off in the past 10 months with a quarter of a million dollars, Vic. A quarter of a million dollars. That's a lot of money. I don't mind you eating, but when you being a glutton and a glutton off my plate and my food, love is love, but I'm keeping it 10 times 10 with you right now, Vic, 100. As usual, one honey.
right? Right, Free. <laughs> You've been carrying me for a long time. I've been a burden and a hindrance to you. And I'm sorry. I thank you for your generosity of finance. I thank you for your generosity of friendship. And I thank you for your generosity of spirit. You know what? It's all good, my brother. But you owe me. Oh, yeah, you owe me. Yeah, how you figure Big that? Big time. Uh-huh. How? How? Dirt, bike, Don. <laughs> you remember him? Dude who was robbing everybody in the towers? Vic, I thought we were never, ever gonna talk about this. Oh, you thought wrong, homie. <laughs> ah, I remember it like it was yesterday. Remember when we were on the stairwell in the building? Remember that? We had just brought our sheepskin coats from Delancey Street, a senior year of high school. You were the hottest prospect in the country. <laughs> and, and Donnie's jealous butt, man. He had it out for you and me. But more so you, Freak. More so you. <laughs> Remember when he saw our brand new fresh sheepskin coats? Oh, dude lost his mind. He ran up on you and told you to run it. Oh, man, he wanted your coat. Yo, no, nah, big. Oh, he wanted big, it so big. bad. No, we were fighting, all right? We were fighting. Okay, then he reached in this coat. And when he pulled, yeah. we struggled, man. Yeah. And when he pulled back, he fell down stairway by himself that's right, that's and right, cracked his right. head in two. Oh, man, hey, calm down, calm down, calm down. Yo, it's all good. It's all good, fam. I was there. Remember that? I was there. I saw the whole thing. <laughs> it's like you said. Everything happened so fast, you know? You, you was working off of adrenaline and pure instinct. I know you didn't try and do it. Yeah, I know you didn't try and do it, man. Yeah. Anyway, I took care of all the loose ends when you ran down the flight of steps. Left me holding the bag. Yeah. So your secret is safe for me, Free. Has been and always will be. Safe from that same morality clause that you threw in my face when I was banned from your NBA life. <laughs> so, next time you want to talk about food, remember. Dirt Bike Donnie looked at you like food. Who was it that saved the day? Me! It was me! Victor Van Leer, who cleaned your dirty plate for you. You're a clean freak. You clean it in the board of health. Cause of who? Cause of me. You got all this because of me. And don't you ever forget that. So funny. You gonna get kicked out of this. You gonna get kicked out of this. Yo, I need you to ask you for one more favor. Yeah, that's hilarious, bruh. That's hilarious. Hey, hey, it might be the last favor I ever ask of you, but you gotta admit that's for you. Yeah, of course. Anything for FOF. Oh, hey, he says the NBA megastar, his voice dripping with the sarcasm. <laughs> hey, yo, peep this. Let me borrow this here ride, man. <laughs> right, come on, come on. It's not like you're gonna miss it. It's just gonna sit in your Tribeca garage next to your Aston Martin and your Lambo, mm. and we both know they're collecting dust. <laughs> Yo, how many whips you got anyway? Man, come on. Yeah, you're right. I don't even want to know. Yo, this ride is for sure an aphrodisiac for all the hottie hots. <laughs> man, we living the life, man. <sighs> My main man, frequency vibration. We for sure live in the dream. I need this back at the end of the season in the same condition. Repeat, same condition. Same condition. That I lent it to you. Mm -hmm. Pristine, Vic. 
I know I know what that word means. <laughs> I, I won't let you down, man. I'm gonna treat this ride like one of my own hottie hots. No. No? No, you not. Not in this car, you not. No. <laughs> All right, man. I won't let you down, okay? I will change my ways, I promise. Yo, you hungry? I'm hungry, man. Let's go get something to eat. Let's, let's, get, get, let's get some grub. What do you say? What do you say? Wow. All right, well, that was very interesting, all that. Very interesting. All right, well, let's get on with the last couple of games here in the NBA. I didn't expect you to be here. Coach let practice out early. Hmm. You okay? What's going on? Same old, same old. Hmm. Wow, your shoulders are really tight. Are they stressing you out again? Yeah. Well, you know you always got me, right? I'm always gonna be here. Baby, I'm your ride or die. And as quiet as it's kept, you and I are the real team freak. <laughs> of course. What are my moms? All right, let's go. Let's go change these shoes up. I never had this feeling oh. with any other woman in my life. And she gave me a different feeling, which was something I fell in love with. I never asked her to be my girlfriend. It just became that. I mean, you could tell when we started falling, like, I get a text message, and she's like, who's that? And it's just like, oh, so we worried now. Oh, so no more of that? All right, you know what I mean? So that's how, that's how I came to agreement. What's different about you then? Well, when you could teach me something or give me knowledge about anything, I'm already attracted to you as a person. I love learning. and. She was very intellectual, and she's a very strong woman. And in this life, I need a strong woman. All right, any more cutscenes, or? <coughs> I don't know. Hopefully that's it. the sports store um. oh, what do you want sneakers
Oh, I thought I could buy my shoes from the 2k thing, but I guess not. Let's go, come on. Alright, game 7 of 8, game 73, the San Antonio Spurs. Let's go. Tough a possible tonight. playoff match. We could very well end up facing these guys in the postseason. So it's important to learn what we can and show them we're not about to back down. Oh. All right, so we get let's, here, let's try and beat these guys much more confidence it's a possible if we see them playoff again. match. That's pretty the good. Stakes are raising every day at this point. So I better man up. Let's go. To tonight's presentation of Noche Not Latina me. in the NBA, an annual tradition celebrating diversity and culture, and always a pleasure to bring it to you. Along with Greg Anthony and Clark Kellogg, this is Kevin Hart. In the last meeting for these two teams, the Spurs came away with the win against the Grizzlies. They come into this one feeling good about the matchup. They've taken both games. Oh, let's see where we are. Damn, we're down by a lot. Last outing for Memphis, Let's they get a run won down. that game against the Lakers in Los Angeles. And they may have yeah, been on the road, but you know what? They nullified any home court disadvantage in that game by how well they shot it from three. Shooting can always be a great equalizer. I mean, when you shoot like that from outside, it really makes winning on the road a lot easier. And for San Antonio, Aldridge out there with Kawhi Leonard. Then there's Parker, then there's Duncan, and it's Simmons in a two-guard. Let's go to our sideline reporter, Doris Burke. Doris, what do you have? Well, Kev, Freak, in the last matchup against the Lakers, stepped up to deliver. He picked up five points and did his work from a pair of lines, hitting from both beyond the arc and from the charity stripe. It was a great contribution from someone who is considered a bit more of a role player on his team. All right, thanks, Doris. He's got a lot of positives to take away from that game. He really does. It was one of his better performances, and that's saying something because we've seen this guy have a lot of good ones. And you'd have to imagine that he'll be out to build on it, to go one better here tonight. Here's Leonard. It's rebounded by Memphis. Now we know the Marcus Gasol was one of the most sought after free agents this past summer. Clark all along most figured he'd be back in Memphis. Yep, a winning team, max dollars. And don't forget now, he went to high school in Memphis while his brother Powell played there. He's where he belongs. Oh, He's one of the geez. best in the league at that. Even with just a tiny sliver, he always seems to find a way to get it up and in. Pass to Allen. Now in the scoring column with that deuce, Stop. one for two this game. Marcus saw a first-time All-Star starter last season. He and his brother Powell both starting in that game. The first time that's ever happened in league history, and having both those guys go head to head. Leonard, the pass to Aldridge, and two free throws coming up as he misses that one, drawing the whistle on a lot of contact. There, it's going to be on Freak. 
Oh, well, listen, there's no doubt you could argue Marc Gasol is the best center in the league right now. I mean, this guy does it all. Defends, rebounds, passes, scores. I mean, he's also a great teammate. They all love him. And to me, that matters in the big picture. When you're talking about developing chemistry and trust, sometimes the difference between winning and winning it all is whether or not your teammates like you. The Grizzlies making a switch here. Green's checked in. Freak with it. Aldridge on him. And it's Freak missing. Damn. A slight rebound advantage for them. One more it's column missed. in their favor. And it's all adding up. Well, you take a look at all of the stats. The team stats, that is. And that's one of the many areas that they've had the advantage. And as a result, they've got a big lead. Ginobili with the steal. And now the fast break. Ginobili with the ball. And there's the lay-in. Ginobili's got four points this quarter. And breaking down some numbers here, the hustle stats for the Spurs. Boy, they've really amped up the pressure at the defensive end, guys, and have piled up the steals in the early going. And also defensively, they've been able to cause some turnovers tonight. And, and that also builds confidence and gives you momentum. Conley kicks to Freak. Shot clock at five. Memphis needs to get off a shot here. The drive by Green. That's good. Green's got his second bucket of the night. I like the recognition of the mismatch there, immediately making the defense pay. Here's Aldridge and fouled hard that time. Okay. Oh, come on. Watch shots, a stat that sometimes doesn't tell the whole story. Big time shot blockers aren't always elite defenders. And then the opposite is true. Their block shot totals don't quite catch that great impact they really have defensively. You know, and, and Akeem the Dream, certainly one of the greatest all around players to, to have ever played the game. An endless array of offensive moves down low, no, no doubt. And defensively, his numbers speak for themselves. I mean, almost 4,000 career blocks. Two Defensive Player of the Year awards, just a legendary low post defender. Conley's shot is off. You know, even against defense as tight as that, you expect him to bury those. Yeah, I don't know, though, Clark. That defender was on him like blue on that possession. That would have been a heck of a bucket, even though we've seen him hit those in the past. Randolph, a screen on Leonard. Conley into the lane. That's good from Randolph on the assist by Conley. Great job of screening there. Nice job to take it to the rim and get the finish. Parker kicks to Duncan. Shoots from the elbow. Off the iron that time. Not really necessary with nobody on you. I mean, why put yourself off balance on that shot when you're wide open? Conley kicks to Freak. Over in the corner, Green, just five to shoot. Score of the basket is third after five shots. Boy, he's really doing a nice job taking advantage of what the defense is given. And the Spurs last season became the first franchise to hire a female assistant coach. A big step, not just for the Spurs, but really for all of the NBA. And for LaMarcus Aldridge, always praised for his terrific shooting, his rebounding. And so we wrap up the first half. Spurs lead by 14. And time now to go courtside as we send you over to... Thanks, Kevin. Coach Popovich is strong. Yeah. Hey guys, settle down for a second. I noticed a couple of things from that first half. The officials aren't doing us any favors, that's for sure. They're calling this one tight. Let's not be too aggressive on D and give them a reason to blow the whistle. There's a lot more problems than that I could mention, but let's not get too spread out. Just know that we're going to need a lot more effort overall in the second half. I know we're down, but I don't want that to dictate the speed we run our offense at. Good shots are the priority, not quick shots. It might not feel like it, 
but we're in an okay position. A lot of teams would have been out of this game by now, but we're still in it. Let's get after it and see what happens. Welcome All right, cool. the start of the second half. Big margin on our hands, but we'll see if that gap narrows down in the third and fourth quarters. Leonard has been playing really well. 16 points, and from long range, he's hit one three-pointer. And when it's all said and done, I got a sneaky suspicion he's going to have a few more. The Grizzlies trail by 14. Getting underway here in the second half. Here's the five for Dave Yeager. Conley and Allen in the backcourt. Randolph is the four with Gasol in the middle, and it's Lee in at the three spot. Here's Randolph oh, and a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. It's on LaMarcus Aldridge. Zach Randolph getting up there in his mid-30s, but his game has never been... All right. Freaks checked in for Randolph. Green comes in for Lee, and it's Udrick in for Allen. Parker kicks to Aldridge. Ginobili left side. Nice ball movement by San Antonio. And he gets it to go. And Randolph Clark can struggle in matchups against quicker power forwards of those spread forwards. Yeah, but even though he struggles on the perimeter against those guys, he punishes them when he gets them inside in his operating area at the offensive end. Most big men have a hard time dealing with him in the paint. Very good point. He's going to play his way right onto the bench and out of the game if he continues to shoot it like he has so far in this quarter. That's good. He's been one of their more reliable options today, guys. I mean, his shooting has led them to this lead. Outside, Green. To the wing right side. Here's Freak. David West grabs the miss. Plus eight in the rebound differential. One more reason why they're in control. Yeah, double-digit advantage on the scoreboard. Uh, they've taken the initiative. They've played, I think, with more purpose so far. And David West gets the whistle that time. That's his first foul. And, and you can see he just did. Well, it was the San Antonio Spurs in their last game, a loss to Miami. We've got Boris Diaw. West out there with Ginobili. Then there's LaMarcus Aldridge. And it's Duncan in at the five spot. That's the San Antonio five. And that's what you want to see. Good fundamental sound basketball with the bounce pass. San Antonio leading by 12. And there's the pass to Aldridge. And foul called as he misses. He'll go to the line and shoot two. We've seen LaMarcus Aldridge getting it done. He's got 10 rebounds. And he hasn't wasted his chances from the charity strike. A lot of points there. Yeah, more than you'd expect from any other player. It's amazing how much time he spent there today. Here's what San Antonio is going with right now. Leonard comes in for Boris Dia. And Parker subbed in for David West. They set the pick. And it looks like the illegal pick was set. Yep, that's right. That'll get their attention. You know, guys, the teamwork and rhythm we saw from them earlier just isn't there right now. They've lost it. And the turnovers are starting to pile up. San Antonio's gone one of three from outside the arc since we've reached the fourth quarter. Kicks it to Aldridge. From 13. And he sinks that one in the back of the rim on the way in. Aldridge has got 28. And, and just a little bit ragged defensively there, Clark. Gasol. And he takes the fantastic lead pass up strong for the slam. Room service delivery right there, fellas. Wonderful entry feed. Parker kicks to Aldridge. To the middle. Here's Duncan. And a great assist by Aldridge as that one goes in. 18 points for Tim Duncan. And tonight's battle is going to end with a very clear winner, leaving nothing to chance. Impressive win for the Spurs. Two great rebounding teams, Clark. Yeah, and these guys just worked a little bit harder tonight. That was the edge that was needed. And the strong effort here will convert into what will be their 50th win on the season. And this will be their third win in three tries against these guys. They match up so well. They really do. I mean, there's one more game to play in this season series, and barring any major changes to their team, I have to believe the sweep will be in order. And one of the league's truly special talents making his mark once again. Another great performance for Kawhi Leonard. You can't look back at too many major moments in this game and not see his imprint put all over it. That's terrific defense right there to prevent from converting in close. Parker kicks to Leonard. 
screen by Duncan. Leonard attacking, and it's good. He planted his feet on the pick and shield the defender off. And that's just a little more for these fans to cheer about as they get ready to celebrate a W. Well, let the party start. The celebration begins, and they're going to let their guys hear. Kicks it out to Al. Outside Conley to the inside. And so it's San Antonio. Easily taken this one. There was a tale of two. Well, Mark, it's a fine performance for you individually, and it certainly seemed like this team was working well together. What was the key to that? We played defense. I thought, you know, I think it had no idea. You know, I thought, you know, I played well up there, too, so, you know, you know that's what you work tonight. LaMarcus, great job. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Doris. Great interview once again. The 2K Sports Post Game Show. Hey, y'all. Ernie Johnson here along with Kenny Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. Welcome back for the presentation of our Jordan Player of the Game, Kawhi Leonard. They were riding a two-game losing streak coming to this game and could not afford to drop three in a row. He rose to the occasion for them tonight, big time. They needed this sort of performance for him. He took his game up a few notches. Love it, Ernie. There's no question about it. As far as small forwards go, Kawhi Leonard is right up there with the best of them. You know if you leave him open, he's going to knock it down every look he gets. Hello. Kevin Harlan and our illustrious 2K Sports crew. This is Ernie Johnson. Have a good night, everybody. Hey, how are you? Good to see you again. My pleasure. Freak. Great game last night. That's what I do, right? Indeed, have a seat. Pagnotti. How you doing? Thought you'd be selling used cars by now. Funny, comedian. I thought you would have invested in some new clothes, being a team owner and all. I see you still rocking that goodwill look. Freak, what are you hanging around with this guy for? You know he's bad company, right? Got no choice. He helps me pay the bills. Plus, my mother loves him. Thank you all for coming by on such short notice. You're welcome. So you know why we're here, right? Not really. You want to negotiate an extension for Freak, right? Well, since you mentioned it, your client is quickly becoming a liability for this organization. We've already put a plan in place that's finish, going to address Dom, all your concerns please, and issues. Let me finish. Thank you. Myself, the front office, and the coaches are not satisfied with the adjustments you've made in your life off the court. I personally warned you about the company you keep and were fed up with the late nights and showing up late to shoot arounds and the bad press and the incident at the nightclub. <sighs> I told you Vic was going to be your downfall and I was right. Something has to change now or we're not going to need your services any longer. If this is about that Twitter stuff, Vic was playing. Okay, it was a joke. It's not about that. It's everything. But like I told you before, Vic is my best friend. I can't just cut him off. He's practically family. Not really. What exactly are you trying to say? I'm not trying to say anything, Dom. I'm saying it. Freak and his friend Vic are a problem for me and this organization. And I called you in here to figure out how we all together can fix this problem. And right now, I'm only seeing one solution. I agree that Freak may need to make some adjustments in his personal life off the court, but that's a learning process. We both know that. But this, this almost sounds like a threat. And Dom Pagnotti doesn't take too kindly to threats. Is this a threat? Call it what you will. We all know that Vic is a problem. The only person who doesn't seem to realize that is my brother. I'm sorry, bro, but enough is enough. I don't have a problem with what you're saying. I have a problem with how you're saying it. Now, I know we can come to some understanding without all the ultimatums or threats. Can we all come to a understanding, a compromise? No. 
No more compromises. I already warned Freak. I told you. Don't be a hero. Cut that zero. It's cut Vic loose, or we trade Freak. It's that simple. Fine, we'll go sign with another team. Good luck with that, Pagnotti. Because of Vic, Freak's reputation precedes him. No, because of Freak's God-given talent, his reputation precedes him. Everybody's been talking. Dom, you know how this works. This is not about you and me and our history. This is about your client. Help him. You're talking as if I'm invisible. You talking around me, about me, but not to me. Uh, Vic has always had my back. And I've given this team everything I got. I practice hard. I play hard. Yeah, some nights I got it, some nights I don't. Some days I might even show up a little late to shoot around. Every time I'm on that car, I've always given my best. And I see how it is, though. I mean, us players got to be loyal to you, but you don't have to be loyal to us players. Try to give me some father and son talk, talking about how you love your players and how you look up for them. Like, come on, man. You trying to cut me off like you cut off Izzy. Don't you have people loyal to you no matter what? People you can't cut off? Well, that's me and Vic. Vic and me. Y'all insist, really. They could tell me stop hanging with Vic. What makes you think they won't tell me stop talking to you? They, you remember in seventh grade, some guys were trying to jump me over some girl. Vic was the one to get some friends just to walk me home. And when they came, we went at it, but I wasn't alone. When I got my scholarship, it was Vic who put the word on the streets that nobody should mess with me because I had a future. Vic was protecting me. And sir, uh, I know, I know Vic is crazy. But before all the hype and the lights, media, fans, it was just me and Vic. He's always been there. I mean, if y'all don't like that, I don't know what to say. It hurts me to say this, but I see his point. What you don't understand is that the league doesn't have your back anymore. Not like they used to. They try, but it's too much. Social media has changed everything. And this last incident with Vic, that was the final straw. It was a joke. It wasn't funny. You know it wasn't a joke. Vic was defending you, stepping in to protect your honor by attacking another teammate like that? Talking about his manhood, his wife, his kids, his family, so you can be the big dog on the court? That's uncalled for. And they all know your relationship with Vic? So they think it's coming from you. But that's the media blowing everything out of proportion as usual. It's not just the media. He's attacking other players, other teams. He's out of control. Vic just doesn't know how to behave. We got guys on our squad who don't want to be here because of that beef. There is no place for that kind of inappropriate behavior in this league. If you can't trust your teammates, who can you trust? What Vic is doing isn't right. He's bringing you down. And people can see it. I see how all the other players are looking at you. Oh, it's not cool. It's not cool at all. What, don't talk to him? Don't hang with him? You do what you gotta do, that's your call. But let me tell you this. You asked me if I had friends that I couldn't cut off? Yeah, I did for a while. Friends, business partners, girlfriends, wives, family that I thought I couldn't cut off. But I learned that sometimes you gotta make the hard decisions. I mean, some of these people, they were just bad for me. They were bringing me down. They weren't making me better. They were good for the time that they were there, but I grew up. Not in age and maturity, but in mind and spirit. I was ready for the next level in my life. And I'll be honest with you, I've been on the receiving end of that. I've been cut off before myself. And yeah, it hurt at the time. But looking back, they were doing the right thing for me. Just don't tell my ex-wife that, Pagnotti. So what's the next move? The next move is freaks. It always has been. Question is, is he ready and willing to do what needs to be done? This is messed up. You take a moment to think about it, but think long, think wrong. The snafu should have been cleaned up a long time ago. With or without you, we got games to win. Freak, gotta handle your business. Okay, you lost it, LP. He might cut me off as your manager, but I will always be your sister. So when this is on you, I might not like it, but I will respect any decision you make. All right, I wonder what my decision will be.
Yvette, please. CC, Yvette. Where's Dom? I had him call you. Why? I'm gonna cut right to the chase. My brother is deeply in love with you. And I'm ready to put our differences aside if you want. Really? On a string. I'm, I'm with it. Team Freak. Team Freak. All right, so if you're gonna be down with the team, I gotta show you the dap. Oh, the dap. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so good. Oh. One, two, three, three shoot, two, swish. Swish. Yeah. Again. Wait. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> One, two, three, swish. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like that. Oh, that's. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay. Am I on the team or am I off the team still? I wonder, on the team or off the team? First playoff game. Here we go, the Thunder. Can't believe the regular season's done. Some of those games I can barely remember. But we did it. We made the playoffs. And tonight, I make my postseason debut. I wasn't sure I'd be here as a rookie. But I can't wait to see what this team can do. Like KG said, Anything's possible. So let's go chase that title. Skip that. Let's get on. Steven Adams is dropped right, in for Lewis Kent. Here he comes in for Serge Ibaka, and Anthony Morrow subbed in for Waiters. So on the four for Memphis, Freak. He's in at the four spot. Budrak out there with Lee. Then it's Matt Barnes, and it's Wright in at the five spot. Now here's Westbrook. Morrow dishes to Durant, and Wright pulls it down. This is not the slam dunk contest. You don't get do-over. You gotta finish the job. Just yeah. A job of Let's go Memphis. 
Yeah, you know, exploding to the basket like that, Greg, just as soon as that ball was going the other way. That's um, exactly how you want to do it. I don't want us taking shots with hands on our faces. Back at the Move the ball. Now Move with the, the ball. Spread the their defense scoring small and get our shooters some These clean guys looks. putting up the offense trying to get their teams to the playoffs. Kevin Durant, number one. You know, call him whatever you want. But the bottom line is, he just finds a way to score. And when he gets going, he can tear the rest of the NBA to shreds. Well, there's no question. He is the priority for any defense they're up against. It's impossible to shut down entirely. So you just want to slow him down from his spot on the wing. Memphis leading. Rudrick, the pass to Barnes. Lee gets to right. Back to Lee. And he hits the jumper for two. Let's and go. now the Thunder. Outside Durant, McGarry kicks to West. Pass to Durant. Shoots from 14. That's good, and so Westbrook comes up with the assist. Seven points for Kevin Durant. And if you're the guy who has to guard him, it is never going to be an easy night for you. Udrick dishes to Freak. Courtney Lee is on the way. Feeds to Udrick. To the paint. And that one's good. Right. And the Grizzlies lead by three. Those are the kind of nice inside looks they've gotten in the first half here. And I think they should continue to work the ball down low, Clark. It's really going to free up their outside shooting. Now, here's Westbrook. He kicks to Durant. Five on the clock. That's a wall. And it's good with time running down on the shot clock. Durant's got nine points. The Grizzlies have gone 8 of 12 on field goal attempts so far. Lee outside to the left wing. Barnes passes to Udrick. Lee outside. He dishes it to Barnes. Six on the shot clock. Memphis needs to get off the shot here. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. Yeah, easy call. Yeah, you can hear the smack all the way over here where we are. The Grizzlies shooting their sixth and seventh free throw attempts tonight. And he makes the first. DJ Augustine's checked in for the Thunder. And both free throws good from Freak. Thunder trailing All by right, three. Let's go. And now Doris Burke has an update from the sidelines. Guys, I had a chance to talk with head coach Billy Donovan. Coach knows that the onus is on their team to come out of this with the win, saying for them they are playing with no pressure. The pressure lies with us to hold home court advantage, but we're in a good place as a team and should be up to the challenge. Guys? Thank you, Doris. Now here's Freak. Now the pass to Barnes. Up top right, shot clock at five, and Udrick kicks to Barnes. Worked down low that time, and he got the three-second goal. Fuck. Here's Augustine. They set the pick. Passes it to Morrow. And good. Coming in on the assist by D.J. Augustine. Memphis is gone. One of three from beyond the arc so far in the game. There's the dish to lead. Shoots the three. It's hauled in by Adams. And at a definite disadvantage. You know, time to tell how big a factor that becomes in this game, anything. guys, but <laughs> if you're the coaching staff, it's certainly a point of emphasis. Here's Barnes. The Thunder making the shot. Right sets a screen. And Udrick gets the freak. Barnes dishes to Udrick. Five to shoot. Right sets a screen. Inside. Freak. Good. Really aggressive play there. Taking it to the rack against the big fella. You know, Greg, aggressiveness is really the only option when you're on the wrong side of the size equation. Carter, he's checked in for Memphis. 
Now, Come on, let's have a good game here. He hasn't scored yet. That I'm sure will change. Outside Durant takes a three. Another field goal for him. Four for six shooting tonight. He shot the ball exceptionally well as they built this lead for themselves here. Carter outside. He feeds it to Freak. At the top of the key, Udra. Down low. There's Freak. And so he earns a trip to the line. Damn it. Officials saw the contact and he'll shoot two. Yeah, the defender all over. Greg, he got in good there. I mean, that's why the shot was so far off. This is his third trip to the free throw line. And both free throws good from Freak. And trailing here in the early going, too many careless fouls, and they're giving up a lot of trips to the line. Yeah, not only the trips to the line are concerned, but the foul trouble also. You've got to play defense with your feet and do so without foul. But Clark, we've seen the lead change hands quite a bit in this one. Yeah, we sure have. I mean, it's been a bit of a windshield wiper game. I mean, back and forth, the lead has gone five times, so no one in clear control yet. And guys, I think each team knows they can win this game. Just a matter who can catch that moment. Tell you what, they haven't wasted any time getting into the swing of things on the board. And even this early, that's a good omen for the rest of the game. Durant, the pass to McGill. Stolen by Carter. Pull up Jay. Connects the jumper drops. Yeah. Good stuff, Carter. We're in front at the first. One quarter in the books, and it's been a close one so far. Grizzlies lead by one. And the second Good quarter start, will get underway just after this short break. Recently, we sat down with Freak to discuss his NBA future as a free agent this offseason. I'm not really focused on the future right now. You know, I'm just taking things one step at a time, believing it'll all work out in the end. But right now, I'm just focused on being the best team that I could be. You know, Clark, it sounds like he hasn't ruled out the possibility of exploring his options. And I'd agree with you, Kevin, and nor should he. I mean, free agency is a big decision, but it's also a huge opportunity for any player. One of the greatest opportunities a player can have in his career, so I think it makes sense. And it's proof to take your time, evaluate your options, and see where you think you might want to land. And we welcome you back to our presentation of Game One. And taking a look at the Grizzlies' performance here, guys, uh, what have they done? Taking a look for Oklahoma City. Adams, he's checked in for Cantor. Morrow comes in for Kevin Durant. And DJ Augustine subbed in for Dion Waiters. Come on. Oklahoma City leading by four. Westbrook with it. He has six. And that'll be Oklahoma City as it goes out of bounds. Thunder retain possession. Well, close to pitching that one off. Still a nice play to make sure that pass didn't reach its target. Augustine against Allen. It's Morrow atop the key. Shot clock at six to the left wing. Fires the three. It's up and it's off the mark. He's over one. Right with a screen out of box. And Udrick kicks the three. That one a tad offline to the right, but drops in for him. Just Freak's yeah. got nine. Udrick with the excellent feed that time. Here's Augustine. No scoring yet from him, but that's likely to change. There's a good screen. Screen by Ibaka. Augustine, that's good. Augustine's got the lead up to four now for the Thunder. Now how about how he sets his man up there, runs it right into the screen, and then gets the basket. Free. 
Reed kicks to Barnes. The feed to Udrick. Right with the screen on Augustine. Udrick dishes to Freak. Pass to right. Now Freak kicks it to Udrick. And here's Freak. Some nice passing there by Memphis. Bah! Bounds. Oklahoma City's oh, position. My bad. Right, my bad. Break now, so here's a look at the league's best defenses. Fifth on the list, the Thunder. Kevin, their opponents haven't been able to score effectively throughout the regular season because they always seem to have an answer for whatever offense their opponents throw at them. McGarry's checked in for the Thunder. And the Grizzlies also with the sub. Lee's checked in. Here's Udrick, headed by Augustine. And Udrick kicks to free. Dishes it to Barnes. Here's Moore. A tad short, but it's good off the front iron. And it's an eight point thunder. Damn it, my bad, Kurt. And taking a quick look here at the hustle stats for Oklahoma City. Boy, they've really amped up the pressure at the defensive end, guys, and have piled up the steals in the early going. And also, defensively, they've been able to cause some turnovers tonight. And, and that also builds confidence and gives you momentum. Now that's finishing your work right there. Powerful two-hand, Jim. You're right. And I tell you what, if he's got a few more of those in him, this lead will start shrinking even further. There's the pick. Augustine passes to Adams. That's in. Augustine with the assist. Augustine's got his fourth assist with that last one here tonight. The Grizzlies trail by eight. Pass to Barnes. Lee outside. No good with the triple. And, and they continue to control the glass. Guys, I think they've simply been the more physical team, and that's why they're ahead. Three-pointer Augustine. No good. And Memphis the other way now. Now Udrick. He's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. Three dishes to lead. Feeds to Udrick. Right sets a screen. The three from Barnes. Score the basket. Nice shot after missing his first attempt. And he came off that screen, and the D just didn't get over the top of it. Yep, weren't there in time enough to challenge, Greg. And when that's the case, you can mark those up for him. And stolen by Freak. And Udrick with a clear path to the hoop. That's good from Barnes on the assist by Udrick. Good stuff, man. Udrick has got five assists in the game. That is such good work to make this a one-possession game. Terrific steal to get it all started. And it's one thing to get the steal, but to so abruptly turn it into a transition opportunity, even better. Man, have they been effective at getting the ball inside. I tell you, we're taking a look at some real deficiencies defensively. I mean, they've given up five straight good looks in the paint. Right with a screen on Augustine. And Udrick kicks to right, five to shoot, and shot on the way. The rebound by McGarry. The defense better not make a habit of giving him that shot. I mean, he doesn't miss many of them. Let's go now to the sideline and catch up with Doris Burke. Hey, Doris. Well, Kev, Freak, in the last matchup against the Warriors, made some nice plays. He finished with a handful of points, and along with what he did on the offensive end, he also played some stellar defense as well. Overall, just an incredible bonus for his team as he made a big impact coming off the bench. And Doris, thank you so much. He couldn't have been much better in that game, could he? Not at all. He, he was great. I mean, that's for sure. If he wasn't at his best, he was awfully close. Guys, he came to compete and win. Let's hope he's got that same attitude, that okay. same energy, that same swag here tonight. Talk about some great numbers for free. 12 points, and he's produced six points from the free throw line. That's nice work. And Clark, it'll definitely help their cause. Westbrook can't get it to go. Not really his best quarter as far as scoring. Let, let's see if he can eventually get back on track. Rudrick, the pass to Freak. A strong finish under heavy pressure all over. Freak's got seven points here in this quarter. The Thunder leading by four. Shot clock and game clock separated by less than six seconds. Now here is Augustine. Doubled by Lee. And out of bounds as Memphis gains possession. That is just a careless turnover. You Sky Grizzly. Grizzlies. I'm on the bench. 
and the first half comes to a All right, it's a full point. It's been very close so far. Four points it's in the these guys. Let's go. And a chance now to send you over to Doris Burke standing by on the sideline. Doris? Kevin, you obviously found your rhythm offensively. Tell us how you've gotten into that groove. Well, I'm just playing off of my teammates. They're doing a great job of penetrating and kicking. And I'm not trying to force anything. I'm playing my game with an offense, and shots are starting to fall for me. Kevin, thank you so much. Always a humble superstar, guys. Thank you for the great interview, Doris. We'll be back for the third quarter of basketball following halftime. Okay, guys, listen up. We're on the brink of a big win here. If we can build on the positives and eliminate the negatives, this is critical. Well, our on-the-ball defense was pretty solid in the first half. We cut a lot of their possessions short by coming up with steals before they had a chance to set up. Stay tight on the ball like that. Keep denying them space. I did like the scoring punch we got off the bench. That heated things up for us when we had to have a little something extra. And just to talk about what we want for the pace of the game, I'd say nice and steady suits us just fine. It doesn't have to be a track meet. This game isn't just about today. We get this win. We build momentum for the rest of the playoffs. Our train will be rolling. All right, let's go men first. This is our time. All right, let's see if we come out. So a close game sees Memphis take this one. Oh, we, well, we get the right victory in this first playoff. Like this in the I don't come on there at so, all. So critical. And you know they'll want to ride but that's okay. Into game two. And now let's one of my best Doris games Burke, so far. By on the but uh, 14 points, two rebounds, one steal. It's good. It's very good. Gentlemen, I'm here with Mark Gasol. And Mark, how would you break down this game in terms of the team's performance and ability to come away with this win? Just a uh, good all-around night. We believe that in the fourth quarter, I think we did a good job of, uh, you know, staying in the game. Uh, you know, uh, we just believe. On to the next one. Thank you so much. Back to you guys at the we table. We said, dude. Thank you, Doris. Great interview uh, once again. First game show. And that about wraps it up, folks. We hope you've enjoyed our broadcast of the NBA Western Conference quarterfinals. This is Kevin Harlan thanking you for watching. And we'll see you next time. But first, the post game show with Ernie Johnson just a few aisles above us. The 2K Sports Post Game Show. Many thanks, Kevin. So now we move on to our Jordan player of the game, Zach Randall. He notched his season high, and his scoring really seemed to set the tempo for his team tonight. What do you like about his performance, Shaq? Starting out the series, this is a huge win to go up 1-0. He gave them the energy and effort they needed. Huge performance. And what a time to do it. If he can keep up this effort, Ernie, boy, oh boy, oh boy. I can't imagine a player having a better night from the field than he had tonight. His shooting percentage was off the charts. He used every trick in the book to get those high percentage shots. He shot from every direction, and there was a little bit of luck here and there, but he was on fire. And that will wrap up this round one broadcast of the NBA playoffs on two days. They'll show more videos for than Kenny me, the then. Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. I'm Ernie Johnson, and we'll see you again as the NBA playoffs continue.
I know money isn't everything to you, Freak, and I find it hard to say this, but I've grown to respect it in you. You're a man of conviction. But it's my responsibility to point out the consequences of that way of thinking. Now, for you, winning is everything. But winning isn't something you could do alone. It requires excellent or, at the very least, competent coaching, contributing teammates, and God-willing good health. And we all know that's not a guarantee. Now, the reality is you're not in control of any of those other factors. But if you, as the star player, fail to win and deliver a championship, you will be held responsible. You will be scapegoated, you will be villainized, and you will be punished accordingly. So when you say to me that as a free agent, all you care about is being in the best position to win, I understand what you mean. But again, that's not only up to you. Now, I'm going to call my guy at Apollo Jets. I'm going to get us a private plane for this tour. I promise you, you're going to love the free agency experience. Now, your relationship with Vic has unfortunately cost us in some of these negotiations. We had 10 teams interested. We now only have three. But thankfully, thankfully, you wised up when it came to Vic. Have you been in contact with Vic? Yo, freak, look at me. He still has one of my cars, Dom. What did I tell you about the L word? The L word? What is Loyalty. Uh. I don't know what kind of hold this Vic has over you, but it makes me scared. You're a free agent for the first and loyalty that hasn't. been earned and isn't deserved. This is a tough business, Freak. We need to be tougher. Come on. CC? Woo! Lord Jesus, I was about to blow a gasket. <sighs> okay, Freak. Now, our, there are our very few options on the table, and I want you to explore them all before making your final decision. Whatever you decide, it needs to be an informed decision, not an emotional one. The larger the markets, the greater resources at your disposal, and exposure for you. But if you don't allocate these resources properly, then it's just a big spotlight on you as you lose. Well, thank you kindly, big sis. She's right, Freak. Thanks. Absolutely. Team Freak. That's what we're about. Oh, whoa, I don't know if I like this. What? what? Dom and CC high-fiving like that? I mean, yeah, why you got so certain I'm going to lose? Whoa, whoa, whoa. No one thinks you're going to lose, Freak. You guys sure sound like it. We just want you to select a franchise that has great coaching, super talent exposure, but most importantly, a ton of cap space. If the team doesn't win and you're to blame, at least you won't be broke, capiche? Capiche. Also, you should make sure it's somewhere you want to raise a family, but no pressure. Mm. <laughs> you guys have made this decision so much easier. What do mom and dad say? You know what they say. I mean, but honestly, I'm torn. I've heard and listened to what you've all had to say. Don't take this the wrong way. There's just one person I haven't heard from, and that's Vic. Oh, Lord, help us. Yo, Vic, where you at? I've been trying to call you, man. Hit me back. You know him. He's probably somewhere too loud to hear his phone. I don't know. I think Vic's actually upset with me. Okay, so my first decision in a while that I've got to make on my own. You are now a free agent to three teams. You are interested in negotiating if you think you can get a better deal, but be careful how hard you push. <laughs> so the Kings, 51% interest, 11 minutes. 49% interest, Memphis, 10 minutes. Orlando. Is Cleveland on there? I'm just going to pick them anyway. Um, we'll go with the Kings. And we might go with the... Orlando Magic, so the Kings, Orlando Magic, and Cleveland, even though they're way down the bottom, but, yeah, I just want to see how I go with that.
free agency offers round one. So, the Kings have offered me three minutes, a two-year contract, 300 per game. Cleveland, one-year contract, two minutes per game, 100 and... Just would like more minutes. Um, maybe... Um, I like to negotiate some more money from them, but we negotiate more time. Alright, let's see what they offer me here in round two. Alright, so Cleveland have pulled. Um, so that's a bummer. Um, the Kings have raised up my minutes. The Magic have raised up the cash. I'm going to get them to raise both. And we'll get them... We'll just see what happens. Actually, we'll get them to hold. Oh. Get them to hold off at the moment. See what round three is this. Well, they've pulled. So it looks like it is on end, though. <coughs> Um, damn, I want should have went with the Kings. <coughs> I'm going to deny. So I can't pick them again. Damn. Alright. Hornets. We'll see what they say. Alright. Oh. Hang on, negotiate both. Negotiate more money. Negotiate some more time. Actually, we'll put it on hold. I should have went with the Kings when I, I had a chance. Thank God, my Lord and Savior, my family, my agent, Mr. Don Pagnotti, twin sister and manager, Cece, my lady. Thank you guys for all your support. 
I'd also like to thank all the fans um, and all the people out there who consider themselves an FOF, friend of free. My free agency has been nothing short of amazing. And frankly, it has been a dream come true. But like most dreams, the reality is very different from what I imagined. Though I wouldn't change a thing about this period and the time I spent in the NBA, I can honestly say that nothing has been more gratifying and more difficult than choosing where to play next year. I sought the wise counsel of my loved ones. Nothing puts me at ease more than knowing that regardless of my decision, you guys will be there for me no matter what. Now, there are so many wonderful teams in the league, each filled with stellar talent and all vying to be number one. For me, there's nothing more important than winning and surrounding myself with those who feel just as passionately about the game as I do and have an unrelenting desire to win a championship ring. That's what matters most to me. It is for this reason, above all, I've decided to play for the Philadelphia 76ers. Yeah. Good job. Brotherly love. <laughs>
When you really sit down and think about it, life is about the length of, blink of an eye. And that's for sure, quick. We spend a third sleeping in bed, a third trying to figure this thing called life out. <laughs> Yo, by the time we think you got it all figured out, you only got a third of your life left. Yeah, life's a trip. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> life's a trip. <sighs> ten times ten. Uh, honey. <laughs> Hey, yo, shout out to my man, Vic. <laughs> shout out to Vic. <laughs> Come on, let's bounce. All right. Yeah, I'm about to wake up the project like I used to. Better <laughs> not. You better not. We ain't kids no more. Cece? Hey! Why are you sneaking up on us? Hey, we thought you two left town yesterday after the funeral. <laughs> we decided uh, to stay one more day. Oh, I'm so glad you did. I wish we had known you were coming. We would have made you something to eat. Yeah. Oh, that's why. Okay. <laughs> what y'all doing? Hey, chatting. Yeah, talking about yesterday's service. Oh, uh, okay. How you holding up, son? You know what? I'm okay, Pops. But you know what? We love you too so much. And it's only now that I'm realizing how much you two sacrificed for Cece and myself. Hey, did you know Vic didn't really get to know his father growing up? Like, we were lucky to grow up in a household with two loving parents. Uh, and you know what's sad to say? Like, people thought we had a highly unusual home in a project. Yeah, folks always talk about the negative effects of boys with no father in the home, but it affects girls, too. And it's helped me in my relationships with men in my life. What men? Anywho, I know that all men are not dogs because I had a great father in the home. You, Daddy? I was there, too. He didn't do it alone now. <laughs> yes, Mama, of course. <laughs> it goes without saying. Thank you, daughter. I did what my father did, and his father, and his father before that. A man, a real man, will always be involved in his children's lives. I love your mother. We had our ups and downs, but I love her more than life itself. You two are a direct result of that true love. Yeah, we know that. Switching subjects. Yeah. I know the both of you like I know the back of my hand. You said you were leaving after the service. Why are you here out of the blue? Yeah, what's up? Why I gotta be all that? Yeah, we can't stop by and show our love and appreciation for right. our loving parents. I'm highly offended. I am appalled. Uh, what's happening? Yeah, come clean. Okay, okay. Me and Cece just want to give you a little present. A small token, a small repayment for everything you've done for us. Yeah, all the sacrifices you've made. And we want nothing in return but your love mm -hmm. and grandchildren. Uh, but get married first. <laughs> yeah, save your money. But, Daddy, we really just But, want Daddy, nothing. You heard your father. Well, maybe, maybe one, one day. <laughs> maybe. But one day is not today. <coughs> <laughs> okay. Well, for real, for real. We do have an actual flight to catch tonight. For real, yes, yes, yes. Okay. for real this time. Well, <laughs> so, good to see you again. Uh, love you. Love you too. Hey, I'll call us when you get there, okay? Well, we as soon as you yeah. land, we'll be there. Okay, mama. All right. Yeah, y'all okay, call mama. us as soon as you get back. All right, as soon as you land. All right, yes, promise, course. promise. Take care of your brother. Of course, always. I got this. Don't trust. <laughs> hey, did you forget something? Uh, no, can you do me a favor and head to the sofa? The sofa? Well, what's at the sofa? Just look behind the cushion. Behind the cushion? Uh, Pete, come here. What they want now? What's in the envelope? Just look inside, Mama. Pete, you open it. Wait, wait, but see, what's this? Does it look like it opens doors? Keys to a house? Uh-huh. A new home? Uh-huh. Son, I done told you and your sister a million times. Me and your mother mm -hmm. are very comfortable yes, right where we are. absolutely right. This now. is Harlem, USA. Project or no project, this is our apartment. This is the home we made for you to raise you up right in. We're not moving like everybody mm -hmm. else. Let me talk Tell them. Frequency, we both appreciate it very much. I mean, we, we're very uh, grateful. Uh, okay, honey. look, there's something else in the envelope. He, he says look inside the envelope. What? Well, look inside. Yeah. Montego Bay, Jamaica. <gasps> Baby, pack your bags. We are living the dream. <laughs> oh. Thank y'all. Love you. All right. Love you guys. Love you. Be a freak. <laughs> By the time you read this letter, I'll be long gone. I wrote this letter because it's the only way I think my voice will ever be heard. This piece of yellow paper it's the only way I'll ever get any of you to stop, listen, and really get to know me, Victor Van Leer. 
My childhood was turbulent. But even in the most unsettling times, there was a break in the tide. My father was the rocky water. And my mom's was the gentle surf. Pops did a lot of foolish stuff. But when he wasn't trashed and was actually taking the time to be a father, he'd say, Vic, you got one life, a fragile life. God can take this life whenever he sees fit. So live and live plentifully. Each day God gives, live it in abundance. My pops was a smart dude. The most dangerous kind. Educated and street smart. And this apple didn't fall too far from the tree. My mom, yo, she was an angel. No matter how heavy the hands, she would do anything for me. And by chance, when I was casted into that darkness, she was the voice I followed back to the light. I was so young, too young. But my decaying flesh carries the scars and memories that won't fade. She's the reason I'm as loving as I was. Taught me to look at others as human beings and not objects. Now, whether it's pain, a simple kiss, a hug, or I love you, could disperse that rainy day. That's why. That's why I'll never understand. Why? Why? Why she, of all people, was taken from me. The only one good thing I ever had in my life. And that was my mother. You ever feel lonely? Well, I didn't have any siblings. And no one would claim me as their own. It is the first time in my life I even... I question the point of living at all. If it wasn't for your family taking me in, I swear I was going to open my wrist or jump in front of the A train. But I found love. And I found it through my new family. Mr. P, man, he was the complete opposite of who my dad was. He was foreign to me. He was a good, honorable man, and to be honest, he intimidated me. I didn't believe I could ever be the man he tried teaching me to be. Miss Martha, damn. <laughs> Real talk, I was in love with that woman. Freak, if you're reading this right now, I'm sorry. I never met one hottie that came close to her. Mr. Peter's a lucky dude, but unlike my dad, he could recognize the angel in his presence. Aside from my own mom, she's the only other person I truly think understood me. I just wanted to be loved, yo. I just wanted to belong. CC, man, I've seen her make the hardest dudes break at the wrist. I've seen her turn coal into diamonds and then back into coal again, just by doing this intense stare she do. CC is no joke. I love her, though. We used to be close. And again, I'm sorry, freak, but when your sister get all mad and on one, damn, I just... Whew. CC, I love you more than you will ever know. I hope in my time past, you can finally forgive me. Yvette was beautiful. A woman about success, work ethic, and never settling for less. Which, that's why I didn't stand a chance. Freak was king, and me, a big, fat zero. She was cool, though. Chill. And when she wasn't being all uptight, that girl was mad funny. I could see why you fell in love with her. She could make any man better. She was exactly what I wanted, and definitely what you needed. Frequency vibrations, my boy, my blood. I'm 
sorry I couldn't be as great as you. I'm sorry I was your weight and not your pedestal. I wanted to be a lot of things. I thought I was the next prodigy. Then you hit that court and I knew it was it. It was you, freak. It was you. I didn't have much of a life, at least not one I could be proud of. I never said this to you, but I wanted to be you. All I wanted was a taste, just a little taste of everything I never had. Can you blame me? Like my dad said, life is short, and I just wanted to live it abundantly. I know it hurts, but your life would be better without me. There's nothing holding you down anymore, Freak. I believe in you. And I always look out for you from above, V. Hey, bring that Jesus piece back for your boy, though. You know, that shuttle's working. I love you, Freak. At least I did something right. At the end, I felt as though I had no place here anymore. I never felt as though I belonged. <laughs> maybe, maybe my greatness is in the heavens. Or maybe, just maybe, my greatness is you, freak. I just hope you and the fam remember me as I remember my mom. Look at people like human beings, not objects. Because if you wait, it's often too late. So just say you love them now, man. Be the voice they can follow out of darkness. Be to them what my mother was to me. power Salutations, I am Sharonis Jackson, portraying the role of Frequency Vibrations, a.k.a. Freak. I am from the Inland Empire, California, Philadelphia born. Just showing love to everybody out there, that's a F-O-F. Hello world, it's your boy Wade Wilson, a.k.a. Big Van Lea, Basquiat, an F-O-F, friend of Freak. Hey, I was born in Oakland, raised in Richmond, represent all day. Love y'all. What's up, world? My name is Michelle Michinor. I play Cece. I'm representing Jersey. Shout out to my people on the shore and in the city. I'm now residing in L.A., living the dream. What's up, family? This is Gina Breedlove from Fort Greene, representing the Republic of Brooklyn, New York. I play Miss Martha. I wish you all so much love and peace. What's up, everybody? My name is Arthur Richardson. I play Mr. Pete. I'm a GI soldier, that's Gary, Indiana, for those that don't know. And remember, it's not just a game. What's up, y'all? My name is Anya Angle Adams, AKA Yvette Ming Ching. And I'm originally from upstate New York by way of South Florida, representing for all the independent ladies. And just let them know we got our own, boo. Mwah. Al Palagonia, born in Brooklyn, New York, raised in Queens, New York, reprising the role of super sports agent Dom Pagnotti. That's right, the man, the myth, the legend, the king, number one, the best. You see this watch? That's diamonds and platinum. Gold, forget about it. Silver, forget about it. That's like speed and power. And that's what I have. I'm the best, and I will represent you. 
Freaking and vibing, freaking and vibing, freaking and vibing. Go to K16, yeah, boy! Yo, hear me clearly and hear me good. I am Paul Garangelli from Petaluma, California, also known as P-Town, home of the Butter and Egg Parade and MoCap Madness, and I play the team owner. Hello, my name is Spike Lee. I hope you enjoyed our NBA 2K16 feature film, Living the Dream. Dolly, a little faster, a little faster. You know I'm on the Dolly. This is my signature shot. We had a great, great time doing this. And as I said before, I've never done this before. It was a very, 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 very great learning experience for me. Worked with a great group of people in front of and behind the camera. And you know what? I want you to see everybody worked on this film. So crew, come on in. Keep going. Keep going. All right. Freaking and vibing. Freaking and vibing. All right, very interesting. I think I might end the stream right there, folks. So I can start putting these on YouTube. Welcome to your second NBA season. Now that your career is progressing and your brand is growing, you will be challenged with managing increasing demands off the court. In between Ooh, games, the work and work on increasing your attributes in live practices? Do you want to earn fame and extra money by partnering with global brands? Or would you rather establish personal connections with some of the game's most influential personalities which bring with them a variety of rewards? The choice is yours. Alright, yeah. I'm going to end it there, folks. I'm on to season two, baby. I will be back later. Catches.